first team, though, I have Jokic, Luka, Shea, Giannis, Tatum. Any disagreements? I'm a Jalen Brunson guy Ooh. on uh, the first team. And there we go. I, I just think the, 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 sh- the weight that this guy has to shoulder as a burden, um, all of the injuries that the Knicks have sustained, the fact that the team, especially on offense, just goes into the complete gutter when this guy doesn't play. I know like that's like, oh, you're penalizing Jason Tatum for playing on a really good team. Yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> Jalen Brunson has to do a lot more. He just does. That's just by virtue of his circumstance. And to me, and it's not like overwhelming, you know, I thought those guys were neck and neck. And if I'm being honest, I think on a per minute basis, I'd have Kawhi Leonard here. Um, but he just hasn't had the workload, the minutes load, the burden, the the New York Knicks of it all, right? Where Kawhi can just be basically anonymous. And uh, essentially, Jalen Brunson is the mayor, the the ambassador, the, the everything of the New York Knicks, man. I, I factored that stuff in. And so to me, he deserve, he's earned one fifth place on the MVP ballot to me. And so therefore, the fifth guy on the first team all NBA. Yeah, it does feel that way. There's the top four guys, and then there's this open fifth spot. And I would say there's four candidates in mm. addition to the three we've mentioned. We got Tatum, we got Brunson, we've got Kawhi Leonard. I would say Kevin Durant deserves mm. the plug here too. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the field as far as filling out this fifth spot. And each of them has their own case. You know, Brunson, as you said, was the weight he carries offensively is such a big deal, especially for a team that now ranks third in the Eastern Conference. Like that's yeah. a remarkable thing he's been able to do for the Knicks Terrible this season. Third seed, though. I mean, like the the, the, the records. It's to not ideal. This third is just it's tough. But a three seed is a three seed, right? A one, three seed is a three seed, and he's dragging them there with one of the highest usage rates in the league. One might say that the East this year looks a lot like the West last year. I'm just gonna say it. Would they? I would. I yeah, think it's, I think it's actually pretty similar. The Kings that's were the a two, ridiculous take. The Kings were the two ridiculous. seed last year. Ridiculous. Kings, you see how he scoffs no, at no, the truth? I, I would say that the I, I think the Bucks are better than what the Kings were last year. I agree. When they're completely healthy, but like the Magic who are in the mix for the three seed, like I, I think they're freaking as good as the Kings last year. Who lost, by the way, in the first round, guys? Remember that. Grizzlies um, were the two. Kings were the three. Or sorry, yeah, the Grizzlies also lost. Suns like... in disarray, number four. <laughs> I'm just saying, pretty similar. Last year's West was good. I don't understand this argument. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, we don't want to get sidetracked with that. But like, yeah, I, I, I just think Brunson has just been incredible, man. But Rob, you have Tatum. I have Tatum in that spot, and I think ultimately what I'm circling around to is whoever you have in this fifth spot. The other three guys are probably on your second team, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I have Tatum as well. Highest efficiency season of his young career. I think it gets lost as the Celtics just keep rattling off wins, except for last night before we recorded this, where they just got blitzed by the Bucs. And and again, I think, look, the, the Celtics are better when Tatum is on the floor. When he's off the floor, they've got something like a plus 10 net rating, which is insane. The other guys are pretty good. You know what yeah, I mean? That helps. Uh, and so, uh, again, you don't want to ding a guy because he's on a fantastic team. But I think, you know, even if you say, like, Tatum is is doing this thing on a per-minute basis, I just think the the workload is, is, is on another level. Okay. I have Brunson on my second team, so... Uh, I'll just rattle off my second team. And I'll, sure. I want to hear you guys. This. I have Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Anthony Edwards. Wow. I, my, my second team is Tatum, Kawhi, Halliburton, Oof. Booker, KD. Mm, okay. Yeah. Right. I have the same five as Justin, except I have Steph instead of Anthony Edwards. Mm. Okay. Uh, Waz, I think you need to take the floor here. Like I said, um, (laughs) I think Halliburton, again, for the first two and a half months of the season, played at an MVP level. Like, legitimately, they had, like, something like a 128 or something crazy like that offensive rating when he was on the floor. He just was on a ridiculous level. The, The Look, it's been way worse since the injury, but I think the totality of his season, like, I don't, like, as good as Brunson or Tatum or, or those guys have been, I don't think they were playing at the Shea and Luka 
levels the way Halliburton was before his injury, right? Um, and Jokic level as far as impact on the team. And so Halliburton to me, he ha- he's he's got to be on my second team. Um, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, uh, I think it's so obvious that the team is like we say top heavy. Like we're talking about Sydney Sweeney levels here, guys. <laughs> when we talk about how top heavy the Suns are, Jesus and, Christ. And so and so no, and all jokes aside, like what they do to lift that team up, even to the degree that we find them to be a bit disappointing. Like it's all them, all the time. It's so t- and, and Booker's efficiency. It's just insane to me. And of course, he's the one taking over the, the point guarding duties. I just think he that he just does so much that he has to be on that team. And then, like I said, Kawhi Leonard on a on a per minute basis, man. Like if he hadn't had to miss so much time, he'd be on my first team. Okay, let's let's take this piece by piece. I, I want to talk about Tyrese Halliburton here mm-hmm. because I've noticed something that's happening as we're getting into award voting season and people are talking about Tyrese and talking about his injury. It's all about oh, here's the dip in his three-point shooting. Here's the dip in his scoring production. This is all what's been happening with him since that hamstring. Aren't we going to hold him accountable for that or ding him for that? What all those conversations seem to conveniently omit is he is still leading the league in assists. And even during that time where his scoring and shooting is down, the Pacers are the second best offense in the NBA, second only to the Celtics. Can I give you his numbers since Please the injury? Do. 32 games, 16.5 points, 9.2 assists, 3.7 rebounds, 45, 33, 87 shooting splits, 19 and 13 overall, the Pacers. So if that's the worst part of your season, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good, but it is also at this point half of his season. He's played 66 games. That's 32 of his games. I just think in other years, if you're a point guard who leads one of the most prolific offenses in the NBA, and you are also the assist leader, mm-hmm. you're usually an all-NBA guy. And, and yet people are looking at Halliburton sideways as if he isn't a deserving candidate here. And the offense is that way because of him. Like, and only him. They they would not be having some crazy efficient offense otherwise. And his usage is right up there. I think he's second in the league in usage even still. I, 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 I gotta have this guy on my team. And maybe some of my bias is being at something like the in-season tournament where essentially he was the best player I saw that weekend. You know, we're talking about LeBron, Giannis, uh, Dame Lillard, Anthony Davis. Halliburton was the best player overall that I watched that weekend. Like, that's the level he was playing at. Again, this guy was playing at an MVP level, legitimately MVP level. And that was two and a half months. Like, come on, man. I, I can't ding the guy too much. I think he was clearly on a first team tra- trajectory. Look, the dip has mattered and it's been obviously noticeable, but he's still my second team guy, man. So you have him on your third team then, Rob? I do. I don't have him on the ballot. Wow. Yeah. Off the ballot. Well, I'm very eager to see who your third team is, Justin. But before we get there, I think we should thread the needle here between Ant Edwards and Steph. Because okay. I, I went through the same mental exercise. Those were kind of like my last two guys for second team, trying to figure out who would deserve that last spot. Same, actually. For me, it's... I think Steph has a more comprehensive impact on the game right now. Mm-hmm. You don't just tweak your matchup when you play Steph. You tweak your whole defense. And that is a a power and a gravity that Ant is still trying to get to. And he still makes mistakes. And I think the fact that Steph is bringing that to the table while scoring as much as Anthony Edwards is, producing as much for his teammates as Anthony Edwards is, and also making lineups work even above and beyond what Ant does. That's a pretty strong case for me. I respect it. I went back and forth between the two. Obviously, Steph has been incredible. I think at this point, I give the margin to team success. And on the one hand, you could say, well, the the Timberwolves' defense is really what's driving their success this season. Gobert is obviously a huge part of that. But Edwards isn't taking anything off the table there. This isn't like a a typical Derrick Rose sort of MVP conversation. You know what I mean? So, like, he's actually additive to all of that. And then, I mean, if you want to factor in defense, obviously, Edwards is like years more impactful than Steph. And so, for those reasons, I gave Edwards the nod. But I could definitely see Steph in this position. Yeah, yeah I just I just think Ant was flirting with like pretty good um efficiency. 
Uh, ever since Carl Towns went down, like he his efficiency has taken a precipitous dip, which you would expect when you consider the surrounding talent. Like Rudy obviously has his limitations on offense. We've talked about that a lot up here. Uh, Jaden Jaden McDaniels, like he's like mainly a spot up guy. He's not really creating or setting up Anthony David. I mean, excuse me, Anthony Edwards. He's doing this on his own. Um, I just think Steph. Um and KD and Booker, like these guys and Kawhi, like they're just so much more efficient on offense than Ant Edwards is. And I get the context has sort of, you know, ruined some of Ant Edwards' efficiency. I just don't think he's of that level to get to my second team, but he's on his way. Maybe next year, kid. And that context is not so dissimilar from what guys like Steph have to deal with on a nightly basis in terms of the level of creation they have to shoulder is probably more similar to the current version of the Wolves than the cat version of the Wolves. Some of these other guys we mentioned just to clean up a little bit. uh, Kawhi, basically 50, 40, 90, uh, isn't playing right now, but he has 68 games, just an efficiency monster. Looks throughout this season, pretty much like the Kawhi of old, the MVP yeah. type of candidate. Uh, Anthony Davis, if you watched the Warriors game last night, that's why Anthony Davis uh, is on this second team because they are absolute dog shit without them. Uh, the Warriors <laughs> scored 134 points. They, I believe they broke a record in terms of three-point percentage, 63% with over 40 <laughs> attempts. Uh, and then Kevin Durant, I, I think very clearly. Same kind of cases, Kawhi. Yeah. Booker is the guy we haven't really mentioned, who you had was on this team. As we go into our third teams here, I actually don't have Booker on an all-NBA team. Do you have Mm. him, Justin? I do, but he was like one of my last two spots, which we could talk about, I guess, later when we talk about all the other guys. And why don't you have Booker, Rob? I think for me, when you get down to this third team, and that's kind of where he was a candidate for me, and you're trying to split the difference between these very good players, maybe this is unfair for me to hold against Devin Booker, But when I think about the wobbliness of the Suns in fourth quarters in big Mm. moments, the orchestration of their offense against tough defense, that's where I see Booker's limitations as a lead playmaker. And that's the role he's being asked to play on this team, fair or not. And so when I think about what holds back the Phoenix Suns, some of it is that Devin Booker cannot do the job that they hoped he would be able to do. And he's been awesome. He's been an incredible scorer. He's absolutely deserving of of consideration here. And we're really just like going through this with a fine tooth comb. And he just barely missed my third team. Booker's the guy where you don't want to reward the Suns with two guys on these teams because the the bar for getting two guys on the ballot is very high. I mean, we'll talk about LeBron James. But they only have two guys. (laughs) (laughs) They have two guys. (laughs) That's the thing. And I was feeling this out, I should mention, when they got absolutely blitzed in the first quarter by the Clippers last night where they scored, like, what was it, six points. Uh, They came back in that game. But, like, just on paper, it's just like, holy shit, he's actually having one of his best seasons of his career. He's been awesome, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he just makes it over the 65 games, Mark, this past game, that Clippers game. But most efficient scoring season of his career is 27, 7, and 5, basically. Like, any other year, he might be second or first team. (laughs) Yeah. Definitely could be. Yeah, I get it. 